Hi everybody, my name is Hannah, this is Pepper and Pine, and I have another mineralogy lesson to share with you today. We're working through a mineralogy main lesson block using this curriculum by Live Education. It is a Waldorf curriculum, and while I am this time around using the curriculum pretty closely, I am changing some of these lessons towards the end of this main lesson block. Now we've previously gone through our sedimentary and igneous rocks, specifically focusing on limestone and granite and this previous lesson went through iron ore deposits that are found in sedimentary rocks as well as igneous rocks. So here's a quick flip through of the main lesson book so far. Instead of working on the chalkboard, I am working in a main lesson book and after these illustrations are complete, then my daughter copies them and she creates her own narrations and I will still write the narrations in this main lesson book and actually this helps me collect my thoughts so that I can present these lessons. I am approaching these lessons a little bit differently than I have in the past. Now that I'm down to just homeschooling one child, I have a little more time to prepare these lessons. And in doing so, I am doing some additional research to prepare for these lessons, especially because some of this content is either new for me or I don't know it well enough to teach. So for this lesson, we're going to be focusing on iron ore formations in sedimentary rocks, even though we previously did a lesson focusing on iron ore in igneous rocks, but I found that, or rather in granite rocks, which are an igneous rock, I found that the illustration that I did might have been more of a sedimentary rock formation. So I decided to include two illustrations for our previous lesson with no written work other than the captions. Then for this lesson, I'm doing a two-page spread to really show the ocean floor, and then the written portion is going to be on top, which then goes into more detail about how iron ore formations occurred in prehistoric oceans. So this is three billion years ago, two billion years ago, when the planet was covered by ocean and there was ocean life that was able to produce this iron uh, uh, oxidized iron deposits in layers f called banded uh, iron formations and then through tectonic activity these layers then came up above the ground and then through erosion and weathering they were then exposed. So that's the overview of this lesson but it did take me a while to understand this content especially coming out after working through limestone which was the previous lessons and talking about how we get cement mortar and concrete from limestone we wanted to move into how we get iron and therefore steel from granite rocks and so after a long time of trying to figure this out which it could have just been a statement rather than an explanation when it came to this lesson but because I wanted to present these lessons with a little bit more detail and depth than what the curriculum was providing and also for my understanding even if the curriculum explained it I wanted to understand it before explaining it to my daughter and presenting this lesson I ended up having to do quite a bit of research and to be honest I got a little bit confused the more I learned the more confused I got and then I had to sort of backtrack and start to understand it and see the big picture but I'm at a point where I can present these lessons based on the information that I have researched in a way that feels quite organic and a lot more in line with the Waldorf approach rather than the way that I have previously done it where we would read a lot of books on the subject area. I would primarily read them aloud with my children back when I was homeschooling more of my children. They've grown now and they're either in university or have already graduated so I'm just down to homeschooling when my one child who's 13 so it's afforded me a little bit more time to dive into these lessons that I wasn't able to before whereas before we would just read through the books on a, a basic level but this time around I did want to dive into some of these concepts that I would overlook or did not understand deeply when presenting them the first time around with my older children. So this illustration is going to be a prehistoric ocean scene. It is not accurate by any means. I've included some aquatic reptiles as well as coral and plant life. 
And the way that these iron bands would form on the bottom of the ocean floor is through an oxidation process. And when the oceans were formed and early in the geology of the planet, there wasn't oxygen in the air. It was quite a toxic place. And so as the water, as the earth cooled and the water was able to be in a liquid form, it would gather in the low places of the planet. So the ocean basins then filled up with water. Over time with plant and animal life, we had the the immersion of oxygen that was both in the atmosphere as well as dissolved in the water. With the oxygen dissolved in the water, it could then react with the iron that was also dissolved in the water. And the iron came from either hydrothermic uh, formations of the iron or through igneous rock formations that then weathered down and then were within the water. And so that iron that had dissolved in the water then combined with the oxygen through an oxidative process forming iron oxide, which would then precipitate out of the water. It would settle on the ocean floor and over millions of years of accumulation and compaction, it would form sedimentary rock. Then over time, either with the recession of the oceans, if this was a shallow ocean, or with the tectonic activity of raising these ocean beds above the ocean floor, these sedimentary rocks would then be exposed to the elements. And then through a process of erosion, through uh, water, uh, snow, ice, wind, and through plant and animal activity, these iron bands would be exposed and then you'd find these veins of iron ore. So that is the lesson that we're doing here with this beautiful illustration of an underwater scene with all kinds of different uh, plants and animals that might have been present at the time that these iron sediments were collected on the base of the ocean floor. This did take a while to do. I was prepared to invest some time in doing this illustration and I basically looked online for different scenes of prehistoric ocean scenes with aquatic reptiles and there were many to choose from. So I took an element of a few different illustrations and then combined them for this illustration. Now it was more detailed than it should have been. I think one or two aquatic animals, uh, reptiles, and then some kind of plant life to show that oxygen was present. I think that would have been enough to illustrate the point of iron being present in the water, needing to react with oxygen, which could only be there through plant life with photosynthesis and the production of oxygen, thereby those two combining to form iron oxide and then settling out on the ocean floor. I think that was the basics of the illustration or the basic point that I wanted to get across for this illustration. Now, this lesson is not in our curriculum, and that's because the curriculum was trying to show the difference between the water rock of limestone as opposed to the fire rock of granite and the different building materials that we get from each. So cement and concrete as building materials from limestone through uh, a chemical process that you have to do to the limestone. And then there's also a physical and chemical process that you have to do to rocks that contain iron ore in order to extract the iron and thereby the steel in order to make building materials as well. So these two building materials form the structures that we see, the the high-rise buildings, the buildings that are common today come from these two different rocks and the difference between the water rock and the fire rock, rock is really a theme that is being seen throughout the curriculum with all of these lessons from the beginning to the end. Now we only have a couple of lessons left in this mineralogy block and I really appreciate the arc of this curriculum because this is something that we hadn't done before and I'm really enjoying seeing really 
an in-depth study of mineralogy versus the study of earth science and geology that we have done in the past. I'm just doing the final touches for this lesson by adding the written for uh, written content for this lesson. My daughter will do her original written content rather than doing copy work. I prefer for her to have the lesson and process the information on her own and then write her own work for most of these lessons for our mineralogy main lesson block. I hope that you're enjoying these lessons. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. I share all of the resources and the projects and all of the lessons that we have done with our earth science, geology, and mineralogy main lesson blocks. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.